Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to uh, week nine of the King Win Pro League 2015 with me, Lothar. We Hi will guys. be casting for you today. We have four matches coming right up. So this is, uh, we're nearing the end of the first season of KPL this, with this ninth, ninth week coming around. This is the first of two days. Tomorrow will be the second day on Wednesday. Uh, much like last week, we had to, uh, you know, put all the matches from Thursday on Wednesday. The same will be true this week as well. So today and tomorrow will be the two final days of the first season. This is going to be pretty exciting. Yeah, it will. The first match is between Fraser and Xixo, I believe. And, well, Fraser will have a hard time in this league, I mean, this season. But for Xixo, this is a life of death, I would say. I think Sixo, if he wins this match, has a chance to get into the top five, assuming uh, maybe Thais loses or Savic also loses. I think the tiebreaker yeah. for Sixo could make the difference and put him in fifth, pla fifth place. But Frezar with a score of 2-5, even if he wins against Sixo, is still not going to make it to Season 2 of KPL. Yeah. So this is effectively a really important match for Sixo, more so than Frezar. Uh, this is the first match we're going to be casting. We also will have Savic versus Thais, Dog versus Orange, and Sho versus Strivecrow. Strivecrow doing amazingly well in this league so far, um, you know, with life coach both of them are rank one in their respective groups although i believe strive crow has one less match played than yeah, that's life coach true. does he has a 5-2 result when life coach is already 6-2 and um life coach still with the double digit tiebreaker which is insane yeah. and strive crow at plus six which is also very good and um well they basically have almost what well, life coach basically secured his um top three um I think so, yeah. He could yeah, probably that, lose it. a game and still end up in the top three to go to the playoffs. Yeah, he has uh, a, so such a huge fine. tiebreaker, like there's no way, even with 0-3, uh, I mean with losing 0-3 now, there's no way he can uh, drop below top three. And Strive Crow, well, this is not certain yet. If he loses today, he might still have a Yet another time. loss. It, it, like, yeah. If Show and Savic get really hot streaks and fire bat as well, and Strivecro loses back-to-back -back matches, this could put him in the four, fourth and fifth place. But that's going to be... like That is unlikely. But it's possible. It might happen that Strivecro doesn't get to the top three. Because the way the league works, for those of you who may need a reminder, is... For the past nine weeks, we've been, well, the past eight weeks, rather, with this ninth one, we've been accumulating points for each player based on the wins and losses in their respective group. It's a round-robin format, so players aren't done yet playing all their matches. Strive Crow still has, I believe, two to go. Uh, one or two, yep. I think Masan might have dropped out, so that might reduce the number of matches uh, to eight. But either way, Strive Crow is currently in the lead, but if he, if he loses a match... That might put him out of the top three. Top three is what's needed to get to the playoffs with quarterfinals, semifinals, and the grand final, obviously, which will be cast on the 8th of May. So players want to be in the top three, or at least fourth or fifth, to be reinvited for the season two of KPL, which is a huge deal as well. That's very true. And uh, we'll have 10 open spots for the people to qualify in. And this is insanely. It, this it's is great. just an insane amount of spots open, if you can imagine. Like, uh, there's a huge, huge amount of exposure uh, if you will manage to to go into the league. And this is something you want to participate as an open uh, open qualifier player. Yeah, and recently in a, in a recent uh, there was a, a graphical thing that was done by I think the guy from thisguystoast.com who who made a graphical thing where I think the win rate of qualified players, the players who qual who got to a tournament through qualifiers, were essentially equal if not better than some of the invited players. So but that KPL was only in regards uh, that was only in regards to DreamHack Bucharest. Yep, yeah, it was one event. Yeah, it was like a event. single event, so we'll have yeah. to see how it pans out for KPL. But it's just to say that there's a lot of players out there who, when they go, if they don't get invited, even if they don't get invited, if they get through qualifiers, those are going to be very highly skilled players potentially. So season two of KPL should be really awesome as well. Yep, that's that's uh, that's how it works. Even uh, like we have, let's um, let's assume we have above um, 40 players that are usually in the pro scene, right? So will have 10 people already invite uh, well you know that will make it out from the season one so then like 30 more of 40 players or high level players that are known to the person will also go into the qualifiers so i bet yeah. that let's say seven spots of those 10 will be known to the scene already I i'm yeah. sure of that 
Yeah, because a lot of the players who will, who might get knocked out in season one, will at least go back for the qualifier. Yeah, and, definitely. you know, other pros that you've heard about, possibly people like Just Saiyan, Dart, names that you don't see invited, might end up going through the qualifier and possibly even getting into it. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a few players who get knocked out in the season one just come back for season two as a result of the qualifier system. But the good thing is it might, uh, you know, it's going to give BlizzCon points. Uh, hopefully if everything works out because of the amount of players who are invited is 50%, which means that's going to count towards BlizzCon 2015, which again is a really big deal for tournament organizers nowadays. Yep. <laughs> I'm just looking at the uh, the bracket and yeah. Masana has like a oh, 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 oh result. Yeah, he's he... missing NA, not applicable. <laughs> that's pretty much what's happening. Yeah, he's like playing deathcore on guitar it's like basically open string that 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 joke only makes sense to be the worst <laughs> yeah i was gonna say like this is probably a musician thing i can't catch that one sorry i just i just don't i can't even play the flute properly i'm like the titanic flute guy like, yeah that's that, awesome that's dude. you can good do I it on stream that's, that's really I, awesome i probably oh, could at that i probably could uh, maybe for the grand finals of kpl i'll be there with my flute <laughs> <laughs> just show you titanic skill right there oh um, awesome. take it with you all right so we just want to talk about the um the not the league system but the uh the fact that we're still looking for casters at king win we have you know, we've been telling you for the past five or six weeks that if you want to become a caster for Hearthstone, King Gwyn is looking for casters. So if you if you have a VOD of yourself casting over a game, send it to esports at kingwin.net. There's a chance you get invited for a cast off in their studios. And as a result, might get some contract or some kind of, um, you know, casting job effectively. So if you want to get into that, that's an opportunity. Seize it. Take it. If you want it, it's right there. Esports at kingwin.net. Send them your VODs and you might get selected. Um, yeah. Don't miss out on that, definitely. Yeah, that's also a huge opportunity, so... Definitely Opportunities like... everywhere. <laughs> What's oh, happening? Why are you making fun of me? Me? Yeah, oh, I wasn't. You. It's just my regular Russian <laughs> accent. <laughs> I meant no offense, Lothar. Um, so, first match is going to be Frezar versus Xixo, as we told you. So, you know, Xixo has... It's an important match for him, not so much for Frezar, as far as I'm aware. Um, there's no way for him to really get into the top five. But it's at least going to be an honorable match. You know, you stay around for the honor. You don't want to be the yeah. guy who shows up and just gives up because he's already Definitely. far And off. also, I think that even if he gets um, knocked out from the season one, uh, his point of honor would be participating in the open qualifier and making it back. Like, th that would be something I would like to do if I would yeah. be in his position. I think it makes a lot of sense, to be honest. I mean, that's definitely what you want to do. You want to get back in the league. I mean, it is a league that's giving you a lot of free exposure. You have to do your best to perform the best you can, but that's the same in every tournament. Uh, but just being able to be steadily seen, uh, if your results are good, is something uh, you want to be doing. So we have the lineups for both players. Frezar has brought Druid, Rogue, and Warrior, and Xixo has Mage, Shaman, and Warlock. Again, a proof that the metagame is very diverse in the classes yeah. represented. Yeah, that's very true. And to be honest, because I was at DreamHack Bucharest and we were like all focusing on the metagame without the last wing. So without um, Flame Walkers, uh, I mean Flame Wakers. Flame Wakers, yeah. Yeah, so it, it, I'm still kind of un unsure how the metagame looks now at, uh, in the ladder and in the Conquest format. So I might be just shooting blanks here, but I really hope that Six brought the Flame Waker Mage. I wouldn't be surprised. I think it makes too much sense. It, it's like, it's the Xixo playstyle. It fits in that playstyle that I give so, to him where he's pretty aggressive and he takes initiative. And I he likes like the Flame juggles. Wakers. <laughs> yeah, exactly, you know? Play Knife Juggler, play Flame Waker. Whatever you play is going to spawn knives. You play a spell, it, it hits the face. You play minions, it hits the face. Everything works. So yep. that that is something I, I would probably... I, I wouldn't be surprised if Xixo brought that. It's also uh, fairly consistent of a deck, to be honest. That card well, is just insane. Yeah, that's true, but also Freeze Mage is... Well, right. pretty nuts, right? Yeah, it, it's gone really good. Emperor, I think... You Pushed know, it over the limit, right? Yeah, we had, like, with the nerf of Flare, Freeze Mage made a comeback somewhat, but it was still weak to some archetypes. With the advent of Emperor Thorson, though, since it's one of the few decks that tends to fill up their hand with options, mm -hmm. by playing Emperor, like, even Handlock, doesn't get as much value out of it yeah. as Freeze Mage does. Because uh, it, um, Handlock doesn't have the option to freeze the board, like, literally, right? Exactly. But, uh, um, I bet just Freeze Mage is a much safer deck to play around aggression. 
right? With handlocks only uh, defense mechanism against aggression is the threat of molten giants in his hands. Yeah, it's a de like it's a deterrent, but when you don't have them, you just lose. Yeah. Like you just get o rolled over most of the time. Yeah, exactly. So for freeze mage is definitely better for the emperor because you're way safer than handlock, so you can just drop the cards anywhere, and you're not so greedy, I would say. Uh, as handlock, an example, when you put your your health above your board advantage, yeah. and yeah, well, I love both both uh, of those archetypes. I mean, the freeze mage and the flame worker. So we'll see which one six uses. But in in my quarterfinals against Impact at DreamHack Bucharest, I won a freeze mage against Warrior Control because wow, of Emperor. Okay. The, solely because of Emperor, the, like. The only Free chance Icelanders, to do it. I'm guessing, or no, no, it's like, I didn't see the match, but I, I kept my coin, I kept everything basically. So I just dropped Forest and on six. There was an Antonidas in my hand, so you know, I just got like a, a six man Antonidas, one Icelands, and uh, two Frost Novas, and a bunch of other stuff. So I just pawned myself like eight fireballs or whatever. There you go. See, this is the way you play. Like, Emperor Thorsten really makes. I think it, it's compounded by the existence of Archmage Antonidas, so that's that's a really nice card for them. And I really do love Emperor Thoris, and a lot of people didn't like it at first, but I think we've all grown used to it, to the point where, it, like, unlike something like Doctor Boom, it's not pure value. Um, it's yep. going to be great sometimes, but not systematically, not in every circumstance. It, that's true, like, I think the card is... A little bit above powered, I would say. It's a uh, tiny bit like the power curve of it is definitely a bit above average. Definitely. Yeah, but but still, it is uh, it doesn't feel like super OP because it doesn't fit in every single deck. Right. So that was the problem of Undertaker, an example, right? If you play yeah, Undertaker, for aggro, you have to play aggro. Yeah, Undertaker. you always play uh, Undertaker, and um, it's even a case for Lotab. Not every single deck plays Lotab anymore. That's also an I interesting think, uh, the, 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 so a lot of people mentioned, you know, making the Emperor effect a battle cry, so you're not punished too much if it stays around, because it's already working as a battle cry. You can't stop it. It's gonna mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. um, the only difference is it can have two, you know, two shots at it, which I can understand people feel queasy about, because if you can't answer two turns of Emperor, generally speaking, you're gonna lose the game. Uh, it's not a necessity, it's not always the case, but I feel like a single hit of it would be enough to make it really good. Whereas if you can have it stick around, then maybe it becomes a bit over the top. But that's like we'll have to see how the metagame evolves. I mean, we're mm -hmm. going mm -hmm. into the last wing of BRM. We have no idea what the metagame will look like once everything settled down. Um, yeah, I'm really curious to see what that's going to be. Like. That's true. But I I really believe in um, Blizzard developers. You know, the, you believe. Hope, <laughs> you believe. I believe. I believe. But the problem of Undertaker was kind of taken too um, seriously too late. But I yeah. hope that they are just you know learning from uh, from the mistakes they they made in the past. And uh, I still think Hearthstone as a game is the best balanced card game I ever played, and I played it like a, a lot. Yeah, I, I feel like the number of decks you see because of the way the system is built with like multiple classes, you see a lot more diversity because each class has a specific playstyle it's going for. So as a result, you see a lot of diversity not only in the decks themselves, but it, because, you know, mages have Frostbolt, um, an aggro mage deck won't look the same as, say, a hunter mage deck, a uh, hunter aggro deck. They're going to be Unless a little there different. Will be an undertaker. <laughs> right, right. And in which case, then it's all the same stuff. Um, yeah, that was a problem with Undertaker. Yeah, exactly. I, I, think, uh, I think the game's getting pretty cool. And I, I like the fact that Flame Waker is enabling an aggro deck for mages that's not mech based. You don't have to play mech mage anymore if you want a aggro tempo. You can play other types of mage decks and mm -hmm. still get that archetype out without the mech warper synergy necessarily. Yeah, that's true. All right. So we have the first classes for both players. Frezzar is going to be starting with his Druid, and Sixto is going to start with Shaman. I have to make an honorable mention to the uh, Fire Guard Destroyer. Have you had any experience with it? Not yet. yet. Not yet, but right. I played the... Max Shaman during Bucharest, and then it was just amazing for me. Turn three uh, kill? Like, no, not not turn three kill, but uh, I went I went three zero with it because you know we could have changed the decks um, after each round, after, after each, each round. groups, yeah. after each group stage. So after first group stages, I could have to change the decks after the second group stages, and after the round of sixteen, round of eight, and so on. 
So I picked the shaman for a few, uh, three times actually. No, two, two times. For the second group stage and for the round of eight, I believe. And Both just Mac? Uh, Mac Shaman, yeah. All right, and both and it, it was really great. And we discussed it with RTU how the Elf Guard uh, Destroyer, Fire Guard Destroyer would change the deck. And in my opinion, it would be like you add the two Fire Guard Destroyers, you drop one Fell Reaver because it's basically almost the same when right. you think about it. Yeah. And uh, maybe same even weakness two. sometimes. Yeah, same I think weakness. you could even cut both, maybe. I was going to yeah, say. So I wanted to drop one and then think about the second slot somehow to, to squeeze the second Fire Guard Destroyer, but the Fire Guard is just so insane, in my opinion. Uh, it fits the deck. It, the only problem is not a mech. But it, yeah. it's not so relevant. Yeah, like, I mean, it's, you, it's not a that big of an issue. The only synergy you really have is, I guess, Mech Warper and the Power Mace. Yeah, but the problem is, uh, that's how, about why it. would you use the Power Mace on that Fellow River, right? Yeah, yeah. It, like, it's already weak to BGH. What are you going to buff? You know, what are you, are you buffing it beyond for? So. True. I guess Fire Guard, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I hope, like, I, I say this, but I hope Fire Guard Destroyer is what brings Shaman back to the forefront. It's been around. Shaman has been around for a while, but I'd say the spotlight has been off of Shaman for a long time now. It's been, like, played uh, in specific circumstances, but it's never had the spotlight like Mech Mage had for a while, for instance. Like, Mech Shaman never really got that same amount of constant hype. Uh, Mid-range Warlock got a lot of spotlight time. Shaman just hasn't had much for a while now. Yeah, that's true. Oh, we just got the information that players are ready. Wow! All right. Soon. That never happens. <laughs> Soon, trademark. <laughs> yeah, they're starting the game right now, so we see the bars, the loading bars, polishing mana crystals. How do you feel about Druid versus Shaman, though? That's the first matchup we're going into. Frezar with Druid versus uh, Xixo Shaman. I would say do you think uh, Fire Shaman Guard Destroyer is... made this about like even better now? Uh, I don't think it's a big difference. Shaman is still favored. But it's not like an unwinnable matchup, you know? Again, yeah. in your hand bookers, I have to brag a little. I won against Galas. <laughs> Shaman was my contra warrior when my opening hand was Shield Maiden, Shield Maiden, Execute, Execute, and then Sylvanas, Baron Geddon, and whatever. And my first play was turn 5. That sounds pretty balanced. All right, we're to the game here. Turn 1. Why do, pe why do people a two, a two use five. that card? Because it kills totems. <sighs> And Xixo is threatening his opponent with Elements Destruction because now he can't play his Zapomatic and is forced to wait and play Power Maze and hit it That's twice. That's still not bad. Still not yeah. bad. It, that, um, that bad. Two for East one. of Flame, what's the name? Um, Jewel of the Flame. Yeah, Jewel right. of the Flame. It's still wow. worth two cards because it's innervated, so it's not so bad to use the Power Maze in that. Like, you don't feel so bad, I would say. And what's in that shredder? It's a mana addict. Not a huge thing for uh, for Frezar. You can't really yeah. use this very effectively. You can't kill at 5-4, but you kind of want to. If you want to, then you have to sacrifice both your creatures I think you do that. and hero power and to play the flame, the uh, druid of the flame, right? It I think really that's what sense. you have to do. I think Savage War might be a tiny bit more... I don't know. Oh god, Savage this is such a tricky spot because he's got no card draw. I have no idea how I would play this Savage Row here. I would rather to prefer to sacrifice both creatures and get five to the face than to sacrifice the um, the uh, Savage Row, you know? Yeah, but Xixo is now on 12 health, and without any healing, this could give Frezar what he needs, like, damage-wise, very soon. That's not bad. That's definitely not a bad draw. But the Mana Attic? No, definitely not. Yeah, that's, like, nuts, I would say. So here's what you do, you Wrath for card draw, you find Swipe, you Swipe face, and then you attack face with Mana Addict, and then you win in the next few turns. Yeah, that's a great great option, but <laughs> wouldn't you just prefer to deal free? And yeah, have sure. Free on sure. board and still develop the Druid of Flame? But then you don't draw a Swipe. Oh. Yeah, that's a big deal. A Mad Bomber, alright, well, that's you a bit in ignore that. Yeah, you just go face, I guess. Yeah. You're close enough to getting it done. Why would you trade that? No, Frezar, that's why you're too far. <laughs> oh, shots fired. <laughs> I'm gonna stand out of the way as these bullets cross the universe. <laughs> you just, you just send them. Oh god, Stonecloud told him. But why would you trade that, right? I don't think that was a necessary trade, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, oh that's a good card. Yeah, definitely. That's a great card with Alotha being played here. That really limits the amount of removal options for Xixo. 
which could and allow Frezar we... to set up a lethal pretty much like in the next two turns. Xixo. Yeah, Xixo is dead, right? No, he's not dead yet because he can trade. With a swipe. Yeah, he's dead to many things. <laughs> Drew the oh, Claw no, no, is no, one of them. Yeah. Well, that's it. That's it. Where shall I strike? Meow. To the face. So that's. Uh... <laughs> I bring life and. <laughs> We should do an entire episode where all we do is uh, the sounds of the creatures that get played. We literally don't talk. We just imitate the cards, right? I take one player's yeah. cards, you take the other ones. And we just shout at each other. That yeah, would be sweet. Well, that was a quick game for the Druid. I think the key card here was the Innervade Druid of the Flame. That helped slow down the possible start from Xixo. Mana Attic, though, was probably a Heaven Send card for... Uh, for Frezar, because that allowed him to get really good Savage War hits and then get damage out of the Wrath. Yep, that's like additional six points of damage. Yep, that was uh, that was actually pretty clutch. I didn't think about it that way. But Mana Act is one of those cards that is sometimes either an auto win or not, like it does nothing, because it dies yep. to three twos without trading. But you know um, what? When I think about the Druid of the Flame, it actually won the game. Because it did, yeah. If, if that would be a Shade of Next from us, it wouldn't stop the. Zephomatic for being played on turn two. And um, did Frezar had something? If we would have a keeper, that would be better. Well, in this scenario, the Druid of the Flame on turn one was definitely better than Shadow of an Extra Mass, but if he would have a keeper over oh, the Grove instead, in, I think it in, might have been better. Yeah, in, in, in the hand, then the Shadow of an Extra Mass would be just much better. But we saw two Drew the Flame from Frezar, so he's still a f like he's still liking the card. Um, although a lot of players have been going away from it, maybe playing against Zixo when you know this is a player who plays very aggressive decks, getting that low curve, you know, a two five is nothing to scoff at. You know, to handle aggro, that's definitely a really solid card. Um, yep. It's kind of like the baseline template you want to deal with. Oh, well, Zixo has a new haircut. Yeah, he does. Yeah, way I don't. I, I don't that have that works way better for him. Well, I mean, I don't remember the other one. I guess it was just like the hair falls, whatever. Kind, of. yeah, hairs. Kind of like. So uh, for the next match, Sixto is going to be playing Shaman against Frezar's Warrior. So that's that could be a weak spot for Frezar in his lineup, because Sixto has Warlock, Shaman, and possibly some kind of aggro Temple Mage, and okay. that could be a bit of a problem for Warrior if it's. Uh, Oh, Even if it's Grim not... Patron, actually. Tempo Mage is not a problem for a warrior, I would say. If you just draw the weapons, uh, yeah. then you have, you're have you clearing the board and you deny the tempo because you just bought two two cards for cost of one card and health, and the health is wrestlers, which is which acts like tempo for the mage, and you just destroy him with his game plan. So, right, because you, yeah. you, it's kind of like facing Zoo when you find the perfect, you know, Fire War Axe, Fire War Axe with a cleave back in the old days. Uh, it feels a bit the same way. Now, I'm curious to see if Frezar is going to be bringing Grim Patron, because that's gotten a huge popularity burst. In fact, somebody's been called out on Reddit um, from like a month ago, where he said, if Grim Patron ever sees play in competitive play, I am disenchanting my collection. We're still waiting on the guy to show up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't think he's going to show up to and, and answer the call. But if he did, it would be pretty awesome. <laughs> that, 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 uh, we have to find this guy. That's really yeah. sweet. I, I have to give his name. So if anybody knows him, I have to find the name. That is, if anybody knows him, you just tell him. You've been called out, mate. All right. Well, that's a pretty decent hand for both players. I, I'd say that double fiery war axe for Frezar is going to come in excessively handy. Yeah. And Xixxel's just spamming well played. I think the sodium levels are a bit too high up in this place. But it's still not rain out high. Or Alish high. <laughs> <laughs> you did not. Uh, we're gonna call you Lolthar from now on. Okay. That, that, that gif just made my life. I can change my in-game name to that. To, to Lolthar? I think that's pretty sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I think you have to, man. After what happened, like you can, you're kind of forced to. Okay. Ooh, Fell Reaver and two Fire Elementals. But Frizzar lacks the Taskmaster. Or... Well, he has Death Spider. I mean, to activate the Execute on the Fell Reaver. 
How do you feel about not using that first charge from the fiery? Is it just not necessary? Yeah, I have to use it. I just don't. No, but I thought he was he was gonna use it last turn to you set up for two four fiery war axe trade. Yeah, yeah, I would do that. I would do it instantly, but I don't know. You have three weapons, and yeah, he, now he's uh, he's one. stuck. He needs to find a BGH off the top. Yeah. Oh, that's oh. not it. No, yeah, this definitely sucks. not. You get. You get so much damage. Why? No, and look at that. Now he's forced to play the death spell without the effect of the weapon. I mean, the I, first think, weapon. I think what I like is like what I like about this death spell is it's telegraphing, or at least he's going to yeah, he has the pop it up next turn. But the for six of it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's all the same for him. Yeah, oh it's, man, that I burst. Face. That burst. Oh, he doesn't go for it. Mm, that's a lot of damage on six of spart. I would just ignore the Acolyte, to be honest. Yeah, I thought he would too, but he doesn't want to give his opponent an extra card from the Death Spites AoE. Well, it's going to be a pretty clean board after this turn, but then Fire Elemental comes out. And there are no Shield Slams at the moment. And we'll Let's see some see. cards burned. Ragnaros, Ragnaros is out, Crackle, Crackle is out. And, and second Fairy Oh, well, that's fine. Yeah, that's uh, that's the, okay. The Ragnar is kind of sucks, but otherwise it's fine. How but many cards did Six will lose on this? I, uh... I think twelve. Yeah, that's been a pretty. But that doesn't really matter. Twelve cards is still like he has like five turns to win the game, so if he doesn't w win in five, I would say he loses anyway. And he has more than five cards in his deck. Well, Frezar is gonna have to play very defensively here if he wants to. To stay alive. I don't think there's anything else he can do besides Shield Maiden. Emperor oh, can work if he finds oh. Yeah, I was gonna say if he finds like a shield slam, it could be good, but it's not it's not always gonna be amazing. I wonder what he's trying to accelerate to. Well okay, Shield Maiden and Shield Block next turn is fine. Yeah, it's gonna give him like it's gonna give him ten life, and that's going to take his opponent a little off guard, perhaps. But now Xixo has to go like insanely Insanely focused on the smoke area, I would say. Like ignore it for reason. Yeah, you can't you can't remove stuff with a hand as big as this and an emperor that's just been played. I think if you start trading away your your board, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. But... Yeah, you, you just have to play everything. You can use the abstract just to deny the tourism, uh, tourism value. Now I keep it for that Belcher. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's way better. Belcher boys. All right, so Fresnar is going to try to fetch a shield slam with that shield block. I wouldn't be surprised. And then hopefully he'll be able to kill one of the fire Ellie's. Alternatively, he could Gromash, Whirlwind, and trade with that other fire Ellie. I would everything. say the shield block into Shields Maiden is way better than the Gromash. No, I think it's a lot safer. Like, a lot safer. Yeah. No argument there. And now the Stardom levels will spawn in six of space. I think he's got to be expecting something along those lines. Yeah. 19 health is still, I wouldn't say, uh, it's Double still doable. Destroyer. Well, that's nice. Yeah, five, five, six, six. that's great. And the second one? Oh, four, six. Now, this sucks. What's great, though, is that they're, uh, they're out of BGH range if that were there. It's like the only upside to having them low. Like, against a priest, oddly enough, I found that I want my guy to be four, six, obviously. Because um, mm -hmm. whenever it hits five or more, it's a problem. The only upside to that is that they use Shadow or Death on a Fire Guard, and your Fire Elementals are safer. So that's always pretty nice. If they have to Shadow or Death a four drop, pretty valuable in general. How does Frezar get out of this one? He's got a Sludge Belcher. He has to play the Armor Smith and Belcher, I would say. And yeah. even use and the even Whirlwind. Whirlwind. Yeah. yeah. By the way, Xixo plays double Fellow Reavers and double Fire Guards Destroyers. Um, what do you think he cut? He's got a rag in there too? Yeah, so Maybe and he has cut. to have Dr. Boom, so... Hmm. I have to assume he does, yeah. I mean, I'm not I can't sure what, what could have he cut, to be honest. So he's not using the Woodwind, he saves that for the oh, Gromash. Dead. So yeah, now he's dead. Well... This sucks. Oh, that's the Dr. Boom. So yeah, so he does play that. I'm curious to see what his list is. We'll figure it out. It's going to be on the website afterwards, so I'll go actually check it out. Yeah, I'm curious too. to see what was cut from the deck to make room for two fire guards. 
I want a five. Sorry that happened. <laughs> Alright, so Xixil is gonna be taking the game, despite the uh, well-played spam very early. You know, the Fire War Axe. I think the Frizzar's mistake, perhaps, not to use the Fire War Axe on the Anoyotron yeah. on that first turn, really yeah. let the Fell Reaver get damage in that it shouldn't have. Um, That's true. So that was one unfortunate hit very early in the game. So Xixil is going to be taking this, equalizing the series one to one, and that leaves both players with two decks left. Xixil still has got, you know, Mage and Warlock, and Frezar has got his Rogue and Warrior. wonder which of these lineups is Jeremy yeah, Fink against the it. other. Druid, Rogue, Warrior, Mage, I mean, Warlock. Mid range I mean, Warlock, perhaps. Yeah, yeah a Zooish Warlock, I would say. Yeah, for Xixil. It might be even early game focused, you know, but he likes yeah. to play the Melganis and the Void Callers, so... The mid-range Warlock with... Yeah, the... and it's really a great deck. And really powerful one. Yeah. I, I really yeah, no question there. he used the, uh, the Mage with Flame Awakers, though. I would really like to see that. And the RNG I think so. I really from think the Flame Awakers. So. You know, I feel like the animation... Of the... Have you seen the animation? It doesn't look like it's shooting two things. It seems like it's one burst of two missiles at once, which looks Did really Did they change really that? Cuz I don't know. It looks really odd. Hmm. If it targets the same creature, you just see one single hit of two damage. Okay. As opposed to two hits of one. I thought it would be more like arcane missiles than anything else, but it wasn't. I would um, assume the same, but yeah, if you say so, I have to believe you cuz yeah. I, I just I've unlocked, been around. Yeah, I, I just unlocked the the wing like 10 minutes ago, so I didn't even check it. All right, Xixil is going to be playing Warlock versus Frezar's Rogue. What do you think is the best deck out of those two in general? Warlock. Rogue Man, has like so one archetype many. still. Right? Yeah, but pretty Warlock much. has like 18. So yeah. uh, I would say that's... Uh, right. Unless we see the first hand and like few draws, uh, I can't say. It's like if, if it's an early game zoo, then the Rogue can just crush the deck or be crushed. Because if you have... Or like be a, crushed, yeah. Yeah, it's either way. It's not like the usual, you know, fighting for the board and stuff. If he does like a blade flurry and just kill everything, you, you win. Yeah, it's by so turn that. three, the game is decided very often against Zoo. Yeah. Um, you either Especially had the Blackstab SI7s yeah. or Deadly Blade Flurry, or you didn't, and then, well, goodbye. Yeah, and then turn four, Defend of August, and you're like, oh. Yeah, this is going to be... Usually, that that's the card that ends up sealing games, I find, very often against Rogues, is once you get the Defender... Mm -hmm. Or against any any matchup, in fact, they that that one extra health on two minions is a huge deal for Zoo. Yeah, that's not about the attack; it's just about the health. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh, look, there's the backstab and and deadly poison. So these players are really nice with each other, emoting left and right. Oh, oh, that's a sacrificial lamb. Both players playing extremely fast here. I guess yeah, I'm I'm good. I... So. Yeah, I was thinking like, what the hell happened? Like the the, the views switched so many times. Yeah, I think the players just play too quickly. Usually, you're used to having like ten seconds on each point of view, but well, wait, what, 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 what is hell? going on? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what just happened. If we, we have to tell them to play slower. Turn. I'm getting dizzy. It's ten two, so I would say. Oh, that's uh, a th that prep spectators. Nice. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, makes sense now. Well, there's the aim gang boss. Now, now we would like to see a backstab. That's a great draw, man. Yeah, I, I would like to think that that's probably the best thing he could have drawn. I, I just say that I wanted to say that he missed now the deadly poison to activate the adversary, but no, he did not. The Drake plus prep could be really important here. They're going to be important. The card draw alone is going to be super meaningful, but he's going to have to find an AoE very soon because those those minions here will end up adding up to a lot of damage output. True. Wow. Wow. Okay. Wait. Hmm. What? I thought he was going to prep, fan of, like pop the spider prep fan of knives before he played the Drake and not pop the egg. But... Hey, I, I, I'm confused, kind of. I I think, uh, well, maybe it didn't have the same game plan in mind that I did. Yeah, but now that just trades for the Drake and you kind of lose board control, like, wow, so much. 
Uh, he's still in a pretty good spot, though. That, that AoE is going to be much better now than it was a second ago. Because it doesn't pop the eggs at the moment. Oh, goodness. Okay. Yeah, well, this kind of changes the situation, but not really, <laughs> to be honest. You know, I now, swear, I swear this, uh, th these eggs are really what make the entire situation for Frezar unbearable. It's like a, that's a clutch egg. <laughs> oh, God. Um. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure what will I do here. Like you lost that, that you might try power. that was nice, so but it's crucial. so weak. I mean, well, spell damage was meaningful here, but the thing is with the eggs getting popped. Like if, if he had the Drake still, that Blade Fury would kill the eggs. So it's hmm. all gonna come down to what Sixo does with that Lothab. It, that's all it comes down to. If he uses the egg to pop it and whatnot, this is going to be the the game changer. Oh, goody. Well, that's the top deck. Uh, well, I would say the Defend of Argus is just way better than the Giant. So you trade away your Voidwalker and your little spiders? I don't know, man. That 8-8 eight eight is just so dangerous for Frezar. Hmm. Well... Would he, All use, right. would he use a sap if he had one before? That's the question I would like to like answer myself if I would be playing that. So, uh, Vile Teacher, Fan of Knives, Prep, Blade Flurry possibly. Mm, but then you deal 4 damage and you still lack the... You still lack the way to activate the second egg. Yeah, to kill the second egg, yeah, you'd have to find it off a fan of knives somehow, which I don't think is possible. What about Tinker Sharp Sword to buff your dagger? Does that even help? Mm. It, you just lack the second durability point. Yeah. Ah, oh, that sucks so much. What about if you just play risky and. No, you can't do that. Well, what about you kill the Dire Wolf with an attack and you just. Play the valid teacher and redagger and play the, the tinker. Blade flurry afterwards, the tinker is on it, on your yeah. weapon to set yeah, up. Yeah, on the for... new weapon to set up for our new blade flurry next turn. I, I, I think that's the only way to clear the board with the 4 4, uh, with the second egg being popped, you know? Because you don't change the situation much if you use the well, you have a now. board in this position. Like at least he's got a board. It's just a really weak one. And now he can't really enable the combo on Tinkers because Blade Fury wouldn't cut it. At least for now. Oh yeah. man, that, that's Sixto just ignores the stuff on board and just goes face. Definitely. Oh. Whoa. Okay, he, he trades the Vile Teacher. That's. Weird. I was wrong. You were wrong. Everybody was yeah. wrong. He would be at 8, and he has Doomguard in his hand and the Direwolf, so that's 6. Yeah, so an Abusive Sturgeon doesn't really solve it if you have no creature on the board, but you have 3 creatures. Uh, that's I'm a pretty okay sure. Tinkers, right? Yeah, that's great Tinkers, I would say. I, I don't know if it'll ever be enough to make the game switch because of the hand that Tixel's got, but... It was a it's pretty okay yeah. Tinkers. So now you use just... Implosion, right? I think you vomit your Dire Wolf and you have Doomguard on the board and you go face for six. Yeah. There it is. Now Frezar is back. Yeah, you're right with that now. What, what was I thinking? Sorry. So... Oh, that's good game no matter what, right? From what I'm looking at here, like, whatever you sap, you still lose the game because the Doomguard comes back on. Yep. So you'd have to sap one of the minions and then... And the flame Imp is just yeah. the best. And then you and kill Dire Wolf. Yeah, you kill Dire Wolf because it... Uh, does it make any difference? Yeah, it does. It, it I mean, you does. live. <laughs> yeah. You live for if one turn, maybe. If you live, you don't die. If you don't die, you still are in the game. And if you die, you lose. So it's quite an easy choice, I would say. Yeah. Well, Frezar is possibly going to die, depending on what six of top decks. I mean, Abusive Sergeant, Dark Iron Dwarf... Like, all of those cards are in Zeus range. And... I don't think anyone plays Dark Iron Dwarf now. 
No, it's gone. For the meta. For oh, look. Fall implosion. Oh, and they're doing farce here. That doesn't change much. How convenient, but how late. Well, that's gonna be game. Second match for Xixo, who's gonna be up 2-0 against Frezar. So Frezar's got his rogue and his warriors still left. Two and Xixo's got one last deck, the mage deck. That's gonna be the deck we've been waiting for. Are there yeah. or are there not flame wakers? I suspect there are, since the card is just... It's really just that good. Um, but maybe maybe he doesn't play them. I'd be surprised I would say the if same. it's possible. I, I really hope he used the flame waker. Yeah, I think Does it makes it make too sense much sense to, not to. Uh, to use the flame waker in freeze make. Um, I don't think so, to be honest. Although, I you know I've seen Freeze Mage play weird stuff like Paladin Shredder, uh, even and Doctor Boom. So, anything possible at this point. Hmm. I wouldn't even be surprised if they played it. Like it's, it's gone to that point. Okay, well, Sixer will be playing Mage, of course, and Fraser picked Rogue again, and when interesting. You like the, the he, I would say that the rogue just the 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 power of the deck, like the whole archetype, is still very strong. But in in current meta game, it just lacks something. It's being crushed by almost every single deck. I would say. Um, in Dreamhack, I mean, you don't Bukura see much has... face hunter, so at least that doesn't punish you anymore. But you've got a lot of weaknesses otherwise. Yeah, but warrior is still, still weak around. To... Warrior is really popular, and yeah. uh, freeze mage kind of. Uh, Rex you too, most of the time. With Zoo, uh, it's way, you know, yeah. well, you know it's a 50-50. Point flip on the first yeah. few turns, generally speaking. Oh, wow. All right. So, Sixo is still playing Mech Mage, it seems. Um, probably a Mech Mage with Flame Wakers put in because spare parts are amazing. To enable that card is yeah, just yeah. disgusting Makes free sense. damage. I wonder what, you, what do you cut for this, though? Harvest Golem, possibly Spider Tanks. Maybe Spider Tanks. Oh wow, Frezar with the biggest whiff of all time. Hmm. Double sap. Oh my goodness. Wow. He what only likes power the, play here. <laughs> he only likes the second mech warper. <laughs> He's gonna start freezing his opponent right now. Yeah, that's a really great move from Xixo here. No backstab. No answer. Does Do you use just sap? sap it? I, I would use sap here. Yeah, yeah. That's a who, who was it last time that made the mistake of not killing the snow chugger on turn 2? Was it Frezar? I remember there was I'm a player sure. who made the mistake of not killing it and then just lost the game on the back of it. So now you, you saw the sap. So you know there's no backstab because it will be a backstab and dagger to kill the to kill the chugger. So you can drop the mech warper with clockwork gnome, right? Or or you can just drop the snow chugger again. And, and then, then go for three. turn three. Mech yeah. Warper, um, Anoetrom, and Clockwork Gnome. And I feel. Unleash this, the max. Yeah. I agree with you. Wow, Frezar again whiffing. Nothing Second here. Is... Sap? No, no, I don't think so. It's <laughs> too late now. Gonna have to go for a possible Sap Eviscerate play or the Valid Teacher. Now, Sixo finds the Anoetron with a Clockwork Gnome on turn three just before Blast Mage. That's an insane board for him, man. Frezar is gonna have a rough time of it. Frezar needs to find the Blade Flurry and Deadly Poison, and he finds the first part of that combo. Yeah, the games are being played very quickly, it seems. Yeah, Both it's, players... Um, the the games are almost playing themselves at this point. True. Wow, okay. Did this just happen four times on a Vile T-shirt? Yeah, I thought I just saw something wrong, but <laughs> no. No, it's right, it's Dr. Boom level RNG. <laughs> All right, well, Sap Eviscerate. Yeah. We'll give him one weapon attack for next turn. And the Blade Flurry can always enough. be combined with the uh, the dagger to kill the Anoetron next turn. But you know there's a Mech Warper, so you just Sap the one mana Chugger with a, you know, option to play the second <laughs> last mage. Wow. I find these two players very communicative. Like, they, they seem to talk to each other a lot. They always emote. I don't know what's up with that. Is there an achievement now? Emote a thousand times. Oh man, if they ever that add that, I don't think so I'm playing awful. the game. <laughs> <laughs> I am quitting Hearthstone the day they add an achievement for 10,000 emotes. Oh man. And then you, and then the reward is that you unlock the cap on the amount of emotes you can spam per turn. 
Is well, Lothar is... the play here? Um, you lose anyway. Yeah, I don't think there's any way for him to recover from this. There's like two Frostbolts, two Fireballs still in the deck. You will just get wrecked anyway at some point of the game. And Xixxer just knows there's no Blade Flurry in... in uh, I mean, there's no no combo of Blade Flurry with an upgraded the weapon in Frezzo's hand, so you just go nuts. If Frezzo finds um, a Deadly Poison, I think he might be able to wipe the board, unless I'm mistaken. That's the only card that really saves him. Uh, so he can... No, he cannot. That's not enough, because he can't attack with his face. So I, I think Fan of Knives might be the play. You hope for a prep. That way the shield is popped, then you can prep Tinker's BF, and that's yeah. about it. Yeah, you have to play Fan of Knives, and otherwise you're dead. Yep, if you find Deadly Poison, that also works, but that's your only line of play. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. So he has like 4 chances from nine, 18 cards, I would say. Yep, and he finds another useless card. If you want to talk about a complete blowout, this is exactly that. And Xixo is going to take it. We saw no Flame Wakers, and that was a really, really quick series between Frezar and Xixo, like just taking the, stealing the win, effectively. And now he's at 4-4, which I think puts him potentially in the top five. If uh, I think he's ahead of Thais at the moment by one win. But Savish and Thais are playing against each other today. Oh, that is going to be a really important match for Savish. Yeah. I think more, more so for Thais because, because yeah, if, if Savic actually, if Savic loses and Thais wins, I think they're both equal, and I think Sixo is still stuck in the top in the, in wait, the last wait. five. Sixo has minus four the tiebreaker. I mean, so he will yeah. be at four four and minus two. So Thais would be if he wins. If Thais wins, he will be four four and plus one. And Savic would be four and four Savic and will zero. Be four four and zero or worse so in effect i think Zixo is still going to be stuck at rank six no matter what happens yes. here right but this is uh, still a uh, week eight for him so he has right. one more one more win i mean one well, more uh, one more match and that, was his, that, that was his eighth match and masan is gone so i think that's it oh for... yeah right yeah i'm sorry yes 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 you're definitely right all right, so Xixo, I think, is going to be stuck in the last five spots. I didn't really think of this before we went into this, but both players wait, had wait, no wait. chance what? of being reinvited, perhaps. Wait, wait, wait. There's still a, still a chance. Uh, Brian Kilder is 3 4. So if he manages to pull off a 3 0, yeah. he will be 4 4 with minus 2, so the same as Xixo. But they would be and... tied for 6th and 7th place, right? Yes. All right, but well, that's going to be. Gara has 3 4 with minus 1, so if he loses. Or if you... Wow, there's so many combinations here. Yeah, combination... Because the thing is, I forget which matches were already played. You know, if Gaur has to face off against um, one of the top players... I'm check. not sure what his next match is. Yeah, uh, let me check it's it. It's going to be happening tomorrow for sure. Schedule... Kingwin.net I think he's playing versus Kibler. Pro League. Schedule. And let us see. Um, Gara is playing against Kibler. Yeah, that's the one match we haven't seen yet. So it's going to come down to that. But I think ultimately they're not going to be able to make it to top five. I think Thais of each show and Firebat Strive Crow have their spot pretty much secured at this point. Because even if Kibler wins, I don't think he'll be able to skyrocket uh, up to fifth place either way. Thais and Savic will battle for fourth and fifth. And if Savic wins to 5 3, then he has a chance to get into the playoffs. So I think the match is going to be really important for Savic. And if Thais loses, then suddenly there's a possibility that x can skyrocket back to rank 5, but that's going to be yep. depending on the Savic versus Thais match. And this is the really meaningful part about the end of the season, effectively, or the, the last week of the playoffs. The two last weeks are before the playoffs are the most important because...